In this video, we're going to continue on looking at the Gibbs energy of phases of the various phases which occur in a phase diagram. So we have the differential of the Gibbs energy, which is a function of temperature and pressure, being the negative entropy times change in temperature, dt, plus volume times change in pressure, dp. So for our molar Gibbs energy, denoted by this g bar, for a given phase, alpha, representing either solid, liquid, or gas. We're going to have our d g bar alpha, so the change in our molar Gibbs energy of our phase. It's going to be equal to the negative molar entropy of that phase times change in temperature plus the molar volume of that phase times change in pressure. So being a function of two variables, t and p, just as we've done previously, we can define the partial derivatives of this uh, g bar given this total derivative form that we have here. So we can say that the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy of a phase with respect to temperature first, the first variable, holding the other variable constant pressure is equal to the negative molar entropy of that phase. And for the pressure dependence partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy of the phase with respect to pressure at constant temperature now is equal to the molar volume of that phase. So the critical quantities are how much entropy does a mole of that phase have at that given temperature and pressure and how much volume does a mole of that substance take up at that temperature and pressure. So we can make a few generalizations which are going to help us out. So generally, we will have that the molar entropy of a gas is greater than the molar entropy of a liquid, which is greater than the molar entropy of a solid. This is fairly intuitive to understand because the gas atoms of a uh, so the atoms of a solid are pretty rigidly locked into a, a lattice. There's not very much disorder going on. Then in the liquid, they generally stay kind of cohered together in a small volume, but they're free to flow past one, each one another and then assume kind of anywhere within the liquid that they want. And for a gas, it's pretty much open season. The gas atoms can fly around anywhere inside the container that they want to, and they take up just whatever space is available to them. And then similarly for molar volume, the molar volume of a gas is generally much, much larger than the molar volume for a liquid, which is on average larger than the molar volume for a solid. Now we need to take uh, special care to note the exceptions here, that this is generally the case that the molar volume of the liquid is bigger than the molar volume of the solid. Usually if you melt something, it will take up more space than it used to as a solid. A particularly noteworthy exception to this is water, where the volume, uh, the molar volume of liquid water is smaller than the molar volume of water ice. So if you freeze water, its volume will increase, not decrease. And this leads to some particularly wacky behavior of water relative to most normal substances. And a few other substances like that, you'll see, uh, we'll see some very specific behavior in the phase diagram due to the fact that uh, the volume of ice is bigger than the volume of water for the same number of particles. And then again, gas molecules will just expand to take up their container. If you double their container size, they'll pretty much just double the volume that they take up. Okay, so let's take a quick little slice through a phase diagram here. Let's have pressure on our y-axis, temperature on our x-axis. So most typical substances will see something like this. We'll have curve there, going up to there, up to critical point, triple point. We'll have solid, liquid, and gas. Let me do that L better. Solid, liquid, and gas denoted by those three colors, by the green, uh, blue, and purple. So we're going to take a slice through this diagram here, starting at, say, low temperature, going up to higher temperature, going through the liquid, and then to eventually gas. 
and then at low pressure, starting at gas, going eventually to liquid, then eventually to solid at higher pressure. Again, for water, this will be an exception because this line is actually sloped backwards because of this reversal there. But for most substances, it looks something fairly analogous to this. So over here, what we're going to plot is we're going to plot our molar Gibbs energy of our phases, solid, liquid, and gas, as a function of temperature and as a function of pressure going along these two specific lines here. Okay, so starting green for the solid. So as a function of temperature, uh, the slope of the solid's Gibbs energy with respect to temperature is going to be fairly small because it has a smaller molar entropy. So it's going to start uh, much it's going to start higher here. Let's see, low temperature. Okay, yep. Going to start higher there. We're going to slope slowly down. The slope is going to be negative because entropy is always positive, so negative entropy is always negative. The liquid is, has a higher entropy, so it's going to have a higher slope. So at this particular point here, we go to higher and higher temperatures. We eventually become liquid. Oh, that's not the color I want. I want blue. Okay, that's better. So it has a slightly higher slope that goes down. And then the gas has an even higher uh, entropy, so it has an even higher, neg higher magnitude in its slope. So it's going to go down even faster. So what this shows us is the, the phase, which is the equilibrium phase, is the one which has the lowest Gibbs energy at a given temperature. So we start out in the solid at low temperatures, because the solid had the lowest Gibbs energy. Then it meets the liquid where it's equal at the solid liquid coexistence curve. And from there, the liquid had the lowest Gibbs energy as the temperature increased as we're going along this horizontal line here. Then it hit the liquid gas coexistence curve. And then at higher temperatures, the gas phase had the lowest Gibbs energy. And so this is how we get our different uh, points along our phase diagram here and at this point where these two where the green and blue meet up is where we have our melting point TM where the solid melts into a liquid and where the liquid and gas have their equilibrium where they have equal Gibbs energy that's where we have our boiling point uh, TB temperature at which that liquid will boil Okay, now let's do this as a function of pressure. At low pressure, we are a gas, and the gas has a very large molar volume, so it's going to be a positive slope, which goes up as a function of pressure. So it's going to start low. We're going to have a very high slope going up. Then at higher pressures, we liquefy, and liquid becomes the equilibrium phase. It has a lower slope because it has a smaller molar volume. So let's say it's something like that. And then at even higher, higher pressures, we eventually compress it down into a solid. And the solid has an even smaller slope because generally it has a smaller molar volume. Again, this wouldn't be the case for water because water is special. It has the reverse of this. So equilibrium phase at each point, point that has the lowest Gibbs energy. We have gas and liquid going along this vertical line. And then at the highest pressures, we have solid. And there would be a pressure at which we, uh, at which we condensated, and then there would be a pressure at which we freeze. Okay, so we can see directly from the Gibbs energy and from the form that the Gibbs energy takes in terms of its derivative, how the Gibbs energy will vary for each phase as a function of temperature and pressure. And that directly relates to the properties of each of those phases, their molar volumes and their molar entropies. And that shows us the behavior of how we get these individual phases, which become different equilibrium phases at different points in the pressure temperature diagram. You'll note if we had moved this temperature lower when we were changing the pressure, we would have skipped the liquid entirely. It wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have been a liquid at all because there was never a point where the liquid had the lowest Gibbs energy. 
And if we went to lower pressures during this temperature scan, we also would have missed the liquid. So it's just a matter of where, where each of these are and what happens to be the lowest uh, value for the Gibbs energy at any point in our phase diagram.